Hey guys, I'm Julian and I saw a tiger and the tiger, he saw a man. Today, we're gonna talk about programming drums in Ableton, specifically punk rock drums. Because last time I did my video about making punk rock in Ableton, a lot of you guys asked me to show the drum programming uh, process. I thought it would be too boring, but if you want it, sure. Unfortunately, the harsh truth is that I don't really program the drums that much. I play the drums live in a keyboard or in a MIDI controller. You see today I have a second camera and it's here to show you guys that I'm using an Ableton Push. It's a nice controller. You should use it too. But you can use anything you want. Anything works. Anyway, so yeah, the reason why I play the drums is because I think it gives more of a human feel than just drawing them in. I'm not the best finger drummer, although I'm very good at fingering. But just got out of focus there. But I'm gonna show you a series of tricks that can keep the human feel in your song and still make your job a little bit easier. The first trick is to put your metronome quite fast, just because that gives you a better grid to work with punk rock. There's gonna be loads of clicks in your ears, so you're not gonna lose your tempo that easily. And uh, it helps you because it gives you a finer grid for punk rock as well. The second trick is leave the metronome quite loud. There's a reason why drummers always ask to get the metronome louder in their ears when they're recording or playing live. And it's because it's hard to listen to clicks when you're listening to drums at the same time, very loud in your ears. So leave your click kind of loud, okay? So this might be a, a little annoying in this video because the click's gonna be loud, but it's, it's necessary. The next tip is when you start recording the drums, don't worry too much about it. Try to get the basic structure, the basic rhythm and the basic feel that you want. Focus on the velocity of the notes and the dynamics of the song. Don't worry if you hit the wrong pads. Don't worry if you, if you miss some feels or whatever. We're gonna go back in there and fix them later. So here we go, let's record these drums. As you can see, I played only snare, kick, and toms. That's the easiest way to start with the structure of your drums. You get these, these four main elements down, and then once you fix them up and you get them right, you put the cymbals, you put the hi-hat separately. So let's go and take a look at what happened. As you can see, my timing's not perfect. Uh, it's not that bad, but it's not perfect. It's close to what you would see if you were looking at a recorded drum track. Like You would see that things are not right on the grid, but yeah, they're, they're pretty all right. One good trick is, in Ableton you can quantize things, but if you quantize all the way, you're missing the point of recording the drums uh, live because you're gonna put everything on grid and it's gonna sound just like as if you draw them. So um, in Ableton, you can actually press Command Shift U or control shift U in PCs, I would recommend using this grid right here. If you use 16 notes at this speed, it's gonna get all confused and put the notes in the wrong place. And as you can see here, there's a slider for an amount. This way you can choose to quantize just a little bit. You see the notes are gonna move just a little bit more to the grid, but not all the way. So it's gonna keep some of my feel in there still. And now we just gotta check and see if there's anything else wrong with it. As you can see here, I hit an extra note, just to raise that one, let's keep going. Another extra note right here. Okay, so there's some funky stuff happening in there, but it's okay because we can fix everything. So the first thing is to just review our fills and see if they are the way that we would like them to be. So uh, the first one, I wasn't fast enough to play the last note. So I'll just drag this note here and now it's how it should be. These ones, I kind of like them. They're not like super awesome or whatever, but they make sense. They're fine by me. Now this one's a mess. So all we gotta do is kind of fix them up a little bit. As you can see, they should be 
like this. And the other thing I would say um, is you can also change your fills if you want. A drummer usually would put a kick in the middle there. I think so. At least my drummer would. So, uh, so this one would be a kick. And you can turn on these little headphones here so you can listen to where the kick is. It's right here. So that's how he would play it, I think. And without this one. Now this one's just fucked. So yeah, we fixed this one, and now we can go to the next one, see how it sounds. Sounds pretty similar to the other one, so we can maybe put a little bit of a extra snare here, see how it sounds. In here, we could have more of a fast fill. So let's just do this and see how that sounds. Now that sounds inhuman, so let's just go back to how it was before. That's one thing that happens when you're programming drums, you make things sound impossible, like no drummer would ever be able to play that feel, so uh, let's, let's keep going. Now here we have a delayed note. And this ending is just a mess. So I think I can probably record that better. So I'll just go back here, I'll turn on the counting, and I'll do it again. Now let's see how that sounds and looks. Ah, it looks better. Am I still delayed? Maybe. Maybe just the first note, yeah. See, I'm not dragging things completely to grid. Some I am, some I'm not. I'm just trying to kind of keep it as natural as I can. There's an extra note here. Let's see. Yeah, let's hear the whole thing. Let's see how it sounds. I'm happy with that. They're not um, world changing drums, but you don't have to change the world to be valuable to the world. Remember that. And now we're going to record cymbals and hi hat. I would start with cymbals because wherever you play a cymbal, it means that you shouldn't be playing the hi hat at the same time. So let's just sprinkle some cymbals in the song and see how it sounds. Always remember to turn on the MIDI arrangement over the button here, or else you're going to erase these drums here. You see, if I record now, I'm erasing the drums that I recorded before, and if I press this one, see, they, they stay here, and I can record on top of them. So let's, let's do that. Okay, that kind of makes sense to me. I'm not really a drummer, so I might be playing some really weird shit right there, but um, it makes enough sense for me. So uh, what we can do is see, the cymbals usually are up here in the drum track, so we can just select the cymbals again and quantize them a little bit. I usually quantize the cymbals a little bit more. Okay, and let's record hi-hats So 
So as you can see, I hit some extra notes in there again. So I'm gonna go and revise these notes again. But uh, let's just quantize the hi-hat. This one's kind of wrong. Let's just remove it. This one, there's no way the drummer could do this fill and play the hi-hats at the same time. So let's just erase these hi-hats and just leave one in the middle where it's just a kick and a hi-hat. This symbol was wrong, so I fixed it. Let's get this symbol out, just leave the hi-hat. Let's get a stronger hi-hat in there. And that's it, that's the final drums that I would use. I would mix them now and make them sound better and all that stuff, but that's good enough for me if uh, I'm not recording a real drummer. Because usually I don't release any songs without real drums, like not for my band at least, but uh, it's good enough for a demo, it's good enough to let the drummer know my, my idea for the drums in the song, and uh, it's good enough for me to listen to the music a ton of times and create more on top of it and all that stuff. So let's just hear how it sounds now. See, there's some extra notes in there that don't make quite sense. Maybe there's too many limbs at some points, but it's okay. It sounds natural enough for me. Now you might be asking like, damn man, I have no finger ability at all. <laughs> I have no finger ability at all. First of all, don't be that insecure. Everybody's fingerable and you don't worry about it, okay? Second of all, if you're having a hard time playing the drums live, there's one last trick that I'm gonna teach you. It's not a very recommended trick because it might make you play absurdly well and play too many notes and you're gonna end up with unnatural sounding drums. But in the beginning, try to keep it conscious that you shouldn't go nuts. Use this trick until you get better at finger drumming. So the trick is very simple. Ableton has really good warping, which is like stretching the sound. So what you can do is once you record things in Ableton, it automatically, it turns on the warp. So you can change the tempo of your song and everything that you recorded it's gonna just stretch and change with the tempo so if I lower the tempo to around here you can hear that everything's slower so if you turn the click on again and record now it's gonna be a little bit easier because you're gonna be able to play slower and take your time and get the parts right as I said, it might cause you to play absurd drums that no drummer could play, but you can give it a go. It's a good trick. I started like this, actually. I started playing the drums slower, but I always kept conscious that I couldn't go crazy and make them sound inhuman. So let's give this a go. So that's it guys. So as you see, I played it a little bit differently, but uh, the result is kind of the same. I'm not gonna fix this one all over again like I did with the first one, but uh, just so you guys can hear, if I put the tempo back up to 290, it's gonna be fast now. I don't know if all the notes are gonna be in place, but it's gonna be fast now.
A little fuck up there at the end, but we made it. You see, as you can see, I could play more difficult fills maybe, and I could just, uh, I could play a more complex kick, I think, at some point, but uh, it's up to you, really. If you feel like you want more complicated drums, just slow down the track, record it slower, and then speed it up again, and uh, just make sure you don't make it crazy. But that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, if you like what I do, press all the things that help me. And uh, I see you guys next time. Bye.